Welcome to the June wrap-up here on the Crux Cantina. I thought it was July. What did I say, June? Yeah. <laughs> uh... We're doing two Junes this year because 2020 has double of every month. <laughs> well, it's not like I sign checks anymore. I don't sign anything anymore. It's 2020, right? Like, that's where... <laughs> Do I got this I got is that 2020 right? wrap up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing some summer month in 2020 wrap up. Yeah. Just... <laughs> when, when, you're, when your son finally goes to school, then you will know all the months. Well, I am Una. And I am July Crypto. <laughs> this is my beer. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. It's so funny because I got we got a comment the other day. It's, he's like, I love these tipsy videos. And I'm like, <laughs> you think it's just the... The tag videos ever tipsy? Like, <laughs> like when I watch these, I'm like, I know which one was recorded first and which one was recorded last. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, that's two beer video. That's a four beer video. That's that's the four beer video right there. <laughs> so welcome to beer three and a half right now. <laughs> By the way, did, did I say my name? Did you say your name? Did we do we intros? Did. We did. Okay, fuck it. We did. Okay, fuck it. They know it's who good. we are now. They're going to subscribe good. anyway, so they're going to know us forever. <laughs> We come to you two to three days a week. We are doing a couple different sections here with our picks of the month, novels, and short story. Okay. So the pick of the month is a new thing we started doing where of all the things that we read in all of 2020 summer month, <laughs> <laughs> we pick one piece that we would recommend that you go out and try for our average viewer. This is something for you to check out if you're to check out one of these pieces. I know what you're going to pick. Uh-huh. I, I already know it. You already know it. Are we doing split screen? I might. I'll decide okay. later. I'll decide later. Uh, just, be ha- just be handsome constantly, and and then if you are, I'll do split screen. I never take a bad picture. Uh, what did I pick then? <laughs> what did I pick? You know, you, you pick. You know, you me? pick three. You pick three hermits. Yeah, of course, I pick three hermits. Everybody needs to read three hermits because it is a story that tells you something about yourself, and I think that's one of the main reasons why we read. And we analyze literature and that we can get so much out of literature is it can help you define you as a person. And I think that story does that. Dude, you realize we've done pick it. This is our third pick of the month, right? We started yeah. this in the summer of 2020. <laughs> Here yeah. we are, summer of 2020. Um, and two of the three have been Tolstoy for you. I know, man. I'm, I'm loving him. Uh, he's grown on me. I told you, like, he was lukewarm and now he's a burning inferno in my heart. Okay, okay. So two of the three were, were Leo Tolstoy, three hermits for you. Now, my pick of the month is actually going to be A Rose for Emily by William Faulkner. Yeah, because it was like your 30th time you've read this? It's my sixth or seventh time reading it. I've read okay. it for class. I've read it for pleasure on my own. It's been in collections. It's hard to avoid, really. But it's just so lyrical. And the more I read it, the more I get to appreciate it and know it, and I'm having more fun with it each time. I think if the we first had- time I... The first time I read it, I did not laugh. Like, even at the fat, bloated oh. description of Emily. Really? Well, I, I'm i allowing myself to have more fun with literature, I think, with with, with things that I, I need to just have fun with. And I'm getting better at that. And I, and I allowed myself to have more fun this time. If Three Hermits hadn't been in this month, I would have picked that story. Yeah. Because I think that's the most accessible Faulkner story we've ever done. And oh, you've said sure. it's probably one of his most accessible ever. And not only is it that, it's hilarious and it's thought-provoking. I love that story. Well, and, and there's a, there's probably a case for most of these short stories to have potentially been that pick. I, I don't yeah. think I don't think a couple of these, but most of these short stories could, for some people, really, could be like, that's my jam. Like, we did some really good stuff this month. So let's, let's jump into yeah. what we did this month, all right? Okay, let's, let's do get, it. Let's, so the idea is we're going to do this as a part of our wrap-up where we're going to recommend it. In our videos, it's the ideas that you've read it, we've gone into spoilers, and we tell you what it meant to us, how it reacted with us analytically and just from a fun read. Now we're coming to the question of, do we recommend it? Okay, so that comes to our unique rating system. We got collect it, which is the idea that you need to go out and buy this immediately. Signed copy, stab someone in the back, get it in your shelves. Next up, we have the buy it which is the Kindle, paperback, hardback, however you typically read, pay full price for it, go out to a bookstore and get it. Next time you go to a bookstore, you should do it. 
Middle of the road, we got Backlog It. This is the idea of uh, if you see it on sale, if you are going to a friends at the library, if you're at the library, pick it up for free, why don't you? But you don't have to make a special trip for this one. This, this is something that you'll want to get to eventually. And then our second to bottom is the Skip It. This is the idea that mm, there might be some things that this is just really not for everyone or it may not be for a specific audience. There could be a lot of trigger warnings, stuff like that. Bottom of the pile, though, that's our Trash It. We, we don't give that one out too much, but many is, there's been a few esteemed guests that have gotten the Trash It category. And the idea here is, hey, there's a book for everyone. This could be your favorite book of all time. That's okay. We don't judge you. We just think for our average audience that there's probably some problems in here or it may be that very specific things that this would only resonate with a select few, which is why we put it in this category. Hmm. I see it. See that? And that pause right there. That's why we can't do the split screen. <laughs> there was this huge lightning strike that hit right when you did the pause, by the way. That might be in my uh, audio. Really? Yeah. Oh, you having a storm yeah, right now? It's storming up good. No. Oh. So if I All lose right. power, you'll be doing it on your own. <laughs> I doubt it because call and video camera aren't impacted. This is true. I'll just have to get really close to my video camera mic. We'll just we'll just be like a um, Goosebumps episode. <laughs> like oh. It's like you're in the dark. <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> All right, let's go on to novels this month, and what would we recommend to our average viewer? First up, we have The Sirens of Titan, which we can finally rate because we finished it and put our video out in our discussion with Angela from the Literature Science Alliance. I, and if you're new here, we, we typically guess each other's ratings. I'm going to guess you said you were kind of poopy on it. I think you yep. still went with Backlog It. I think you still went Backlog It. I don't think you did skip it. You did Backlog It. I did backlog it, even though I did actually buy this book, and it's on my shelf back there. Uh, I did say backlog this because I think that I haven't read it yet, but I think Slaughterhouse Five. You need to read that one probably first, or I don't know first, but you, I don't know. I don't. You're recommending a book you haven't even read yet. (laughs) Yeah, well, maybe that could. I I don't. I'm not poopy poopy on it. I'm just. I'm sure there's better. There's better work out there by Vonnegut. Oh, for sure. Okay. I agree. No, 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 okay. no. Totally agree with that. But I will say this. I still think you need to read Vonnegut more slowly than you have traditionally. I, I think you need, yes. with with how journalistic he is, with how quick and terse he is, this is one of those pieces that I know is marketed to sci-fi, but this is a literary fiction novel, and it's written in a very journalistic manner where it's very quick, harsh shards of just truth and, and literary goodness in there that if you try to binge read it, it's going to hurt. But if you take your time, you work yourself through it slowly, I think you can enjoy it more. Like, if you read this in two, three days, I think that's too fast for, for the yeah. average literary fictionist, in my opinion. I agree. I definitely did myself a disservice by reading it and binging it because I missed out on all of the topics that we talked in our video. Shameless plug. Go watch it, please. And that there's so much to digest here that you need to read this one over a longer period of time. You'd probably but, enjoy it on a reread. I'm just saying. Yeah. So you're going to say probably buy it? No. Are you a collect it? I'm a backlog it. Oh, you're backlog it with me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I really did like this. It made piece. me feel I'm bad a, for that. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. I'm very pro Vonnegut. Okay. That's, it's very clear we're going to have more Vonnegut on the future of this channel. But in terms of the average viewer, I think this is not the one to start with. I think this isn't even the best of his work. This is I actually wonder, is this even lower than player piano for me? I need to let it marinate. Right. This Ooh. was my first this was my first reading Ooh. of it, but this might be the worst of his first six novels, in my opinion. <gasps> wow. But wow. you gotta remember, okay. I gave it a, I gave it a seven. Right? Like it it was it's still pretty solid. Yeah. But you made me feel bad for backlogging it. <laughs> I just like making you feel guilty. That's just I, that's part of our I relationship. Know. Oh, uh, uh, why do I put up with these things, channel? <laughs> First of all, how did I make you feel bad? I didn't do anything to make you feel bad. Yes, you did. What did I tone. do? It was your tone. I have nothing but love for you over here. Oh, my cat's <laughs> tickling my toe. That hurt. <laughs> oh, easy there, Shadow. All right. all right, Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa, our second novel of summer 2020. <laughs> 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 you, did you finish it? You didn't yes. finish it. No, you didn't I've finish it. Yet. Oh, I we can't rate it. Yet. We can't rate it. Yeah. I'm sorry. It. I'm sorry. We can't rate that one yet. Yeah. Uh, so that will trail over into August because of Slow Pants 
travel around the world during an epidemic pandemic. Crazy. All right. I was listening uh, <laughs> to Way of Kings. The channel will forgive me. <laughs> okay, so our third novel that we can't talk about is Way of Kings because we aren't through that. We're, we're both about halfway-ish through it. So that'll be in our summer 2020 wrap-up. <laughs> yes, summer 2020 wrap-up. I like that. Next, next month wrap-up. All right, now the the fourth one that we can really rate for is, is me only, which is Inuyasha. Uh, I've read volumes 1 through 20 along with Leslie from The Nerdy Narrative, one of the greatest channels on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed to her, what are you doing? Get over there, right? So for me, this is kind of, um, I've, I've watched the anime once up through 30, and then again up through like 100 something, but I've never finished it. This is kind of like the halfway point, I want to say, maybe like, maybe episode 50 or 60 or 70, somewhere around there. And what is this piece? This is a portal fantasy where you're jumping into another world. It's very Japan, right? Like, Japan, if you didn't know, going into high school, the, the exams are everything to these high school students. Like they study for years and years and years. It's, it's their whole life consumed preparing for these exams. That an escape is necessary. The, the fantasy of escaping to another world is something that is heavily prevalent in Japan. That's what this is. And while there's battles, there's love triangles, it, it, really, it really tackles a lot of different subjects, I feel like, but on a very surface level. So I definitely would say backlog it for the average viewer. I think for literary fiction, maybe more skip it, I would say. But for me personally, since I didn't do, and I probably won't do unless I finish the whole series, maybe a review on it. For me personally, I'm a buy it. I, I really like it. Uh, but I think for the average literary fictionist, it's more of a, a skip it. It's, it's more just for fun. And it really is fun, I would say, for a fantasy reader. It's very high fantasy, jumping to another world adventure. It really appeals to both the romance side to the battle side that depending on what you're looking for, it has a lot in it. And I think it does a good job of balancing all of it, honestly. So it's basically the princess bride. (laughs) Actually, that's, that's actually a really good comparison. Yes. It is kind of like a fantasy princess, but not in terms of subject, not in terms of plot, but in terms of that balance of adventure, romance, like it's never, it's it's never too, it's never too overboard on anything. It's good. I I really like it. And I've, it's been the highlight of my mornings is being able to read this just for fun, not doing any analytics and then talking with my friend Leslie about it. It's, it's been fantastic. That's cool. Good. I probably won't check it out, but thank you. I enjoy it through your enjoyment. Did you have anything that you read besides that? Nope. I've been trying to keep pace with everything on the channel. Still behind. <laughs> oh, God. Dude, I've been doing this thing where when I drink a beer sometimes, and I, I almost did it just there. I, I luckily avoided it. Somehow, when I tip these, like, 16-ounce like pint cans, like the beer splash, it's, though, it oh. splashes up, and it hits me in the eye. I cannot tell you how badly it stings when you get beer in your eye. It's It's like being pierced with a needle. When you get beer in the eye, I just barely avoided it just now. It's terrible. I don't drink beer, so yeah. My wife has been laughing horribly at me every time I do it, so. All right, now short stories. We've got six short stories coming at you hot. Whew. All right, let's go in the order that we have read and produced the videos for them. Okay, hit me. Short stories. Number one, Hitchhiker by Roald Dahl. You said skip it. Skip it. You said skip it. I absolutely said skip it. Fun story, just not much there Better. for our crowd. Not 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 yep. much for our crowd. Three hermits, Tolstoy. You said collected. Get a signed copy by Tolstoy. Okay, gosh, man, can you imagine getting a signed copy of a Tolstoy short story collection by Leo Tolstoy? Oh, oof. Oof. I, I, it's oof. probably in the hundreds of thousands. I'm sure they're out oof. there. It's probably in some billionaire's oof. private collection. In his huge castle mansion. I'm getting a little I'm, hot under the collar just thinking about that, dude. Yeah. Oof. I mean, you yeah, would never course. read it. It would just sit in a, you know, case. No. Well, it'd be in a case with one of those dim lights over it, but, the, but not enough to damage yeah. it, right? Just just enough to, so you see what it is. Kind of like, well, uh, have you been to D.C. and seen, like, the Declaration of Independence? Yeah, it's, it's got like, those special lights in there that, yeah. keep the, that keep it preserved so the paper doesn't degrade any further. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's what I would do for this one. Yeah. I mean, realistically, it'd only be like 130 years old, and I have books that are 150. I have a couple history books that are from 1870s, 1860s. So, oh. but you'd want to keep it in good condition, obviously, because it's very rare. That's cool. So that's yeah. cool. 
you should give us a tour of your collectible stuff someday. I'm just saying. All right. Yeah. Uh, the Mark on the Wall by Virginia Wolf. You said skip it again. I said skip it. Okay. And, and this isn't meant to demean, just to make sure that you're cl- on the same page with us, the Hitchhiker or the Mark on the Wall. I think these are good stories. I think they're for very specific people. If the Mark on the Wall or the Hitchhiker is your favorite story of all time, cool. Look, I'm not going to argue with you. For us, this isn't something I think we'd recommend. Like, I, I don't think everyone in the world, is. it's easy for them to get value out of these stories. I think that there are better options available as when I say skip it. Can I please recommend that you read this one instead? Because I think that it does, perhaps, to me, a better job, and you may get more out of it for the stream of consciousness type idea that that story is. Right. right. Very subjective, very personal ratings here. Yeah. Um, now, now, with that said, we do have more Virginia Woolf to explore, where we are very ignorant of her repertoire that we need to work more through that. Now, let's get into some heavy hitters here, because these next three are going to be hot and heavy. We've got first coming up, Sweat by Zora Neale Hurston. You said it's either it's either collect it or buy it. I'm going to say you said buy it. Collect it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can see that. No, I, I, I think she is a phenomenal author, and... I think that you should definitely check out her stuff, and I'm excited for when you add more on to our schedule of her stuff because her story was well-written, great execution, and I loved the twist at the end. Right, right. Well, part of it is for us, and part of it is just it depends on how often people watch videos or share videos, too. I sure. watch. I look at both of those, right? Yeah. For me, I'm going to say, this might shock you, but I'm going to say it. buy it. I'm going to say buy, buy it. it. Yeah. Um, I need, because part of it is just personal experience of i know she's an atheist i and and i think she actually did religion really well as an atheist like usually atheists struggle and just make like religious people like like like, like they don't they don't write religious conflicts well uh check out christy lewis's channel she she's the one that kind of started talking about the subject i completely agree with her on that she did it extremely finessed well, but I need to learn more about her or need to read more about her to extract maximum value from her, if, if that makes sense. I, I think it's a fair rating to say it seems like you need to know more about her to extract the most value out of it. Yeah, like we've learned with a lot of things, we need to know the authors better so that we yeah. can know where yeah. they're coming from of why they're writing this. And that's why we've gotten better, I think, at Tolstoy and why we're getting better at some of these other ones is we're learning more about the authors themselves yeah. of why yeah. they're putting this effort and work into these these pieces. Um, right. What's the argument for why this piece exists? You have, to, in my opinion, you need to know more about the author to fully feel confident in stating why the argument for that piece exists. All right, anyways, the fifth piece, The Beggar by Anton Chekhov. You said buy it. I said backlog it. Okay. Okay, that's a little lower than I thought. What what, what are the reasons? Uh, I feel like this one is kind of the prelude to his stuff. Uh, I like the story. Mm -hmm. I thought it had a good message, but I think that this is one that... A lot of people, again, might not get something out of if they don't understand what is going on during that time period. Check out our video. Another shameless plug may help you with that. But yeah, if if you don't have a lot of background knowledge, you might not enjoy it as much. You have a fair point that this is a channel where we have a lot of religious and historical background perspectives to bring to the literature that we read. You have a very fair point that without that that background, this is just a action speak louder than word story, right? But it's so much so more than that. It is, it is. But without that historical context, you don't have that view. Exactly. Which is just un- so, which, which which is just unfortunate because that's a very personal experience, right? Yeah. So I was saying, if you're in a you know Russian history class in college, well then yeah, this is definitely a buy it. But if you're you know maybe a high schooler and you hate history class you might not want to pick this one if you have to pick a short story in your English class. Because you'd just be I, like, eh. I, in my opinion. Reason, I completely agree with everything you say, but I still say buy it. Okay. I, st- I still say jump into it. And I agree I agree with everything that you said. I think uh, I think you're absolutely right. This is a prelude. I think you're absolutely right. You, I don't know. I agree with everything you said, but I'm still buy it on, on how okay. I would recommend this. Yeah. You really like the story, though. I, I That's fine. It's good. It's I a good did. story. 
I did. I gave it a high rating. I enjoyed it too. I did. And I think you can enjoy it as just a action speak louder than word story. Um, and that's and that's isn't that part of literature is to invite the reader at their own time at their own volition to dive deeper where appropriate because there's times where i'm like i just want to read this and have some fun and there's times where i'm like why did he choose unleavened bread as opposed to just bread at this point in time (laughs) right it goes to that point that literature is in the in the reader's hands and i think this is a great piece where it can work when you don't want to dive in and it can work when you do want to dive in which is maybe why i say buy it all right uh the rose or uh, the a rose for emily by william faulkner the one and only william faulkner you said buy it i said buy it yeah this is a great story and you said collect it i sure did it was your pick so it had to be right (laughs) well this is why i would say collect it okay so for the average viewer like Red Leaves was great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That Evening Sun was great. Mm-hmm. Amazing stories. Yeah. We we can pull a lot out of it. We've, we've got a lot more Faulkner experience. To your, to your point earlier about how we've read a lot of Tolstoy, we've read a lot of Faulkner. We, can, we know their ethos. We know what their style is. We know what their writing goals are. This is one of those pieces that might be the best introduction to William Faulkner. It might be the best introduction to Southern Gothic literature. It might be the best place to start talking about Old South and New South, because while Absalom Absalom's way better at that discussion than this, this one's 12 pages. This one's yeah, it's 11 more pages. It's more accessible. Yeah. What better place to take a student to talk about, hey, just because the war was over, the Civil War ended, doesn't mean things just ended right then and there and slavery was over and things were good let's talk about jim crow era let's talk about the southern belt let's talk about the old south way of holding on to to their honor what a great piece to bring all of that out this 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 for me is a collective for that reason i think that if a a student was in in high school you know history class college history class or something and you're looking for pieces to make arguments for the old south or you're doing a comparative essay of north and south and reconstruction and race and all of that uh, i think this definitely could be a collected something that you're going to want to use uh, for your argument argumentative side whatever you're trying to argue for sure yeah there, there's i easily agree with you it could be a collected yeah hey these were our You've got your buy it. I'm not going to change your mind, right? Yeah. These are just our views. This is our wrap up. This was our summer wrap up. (laughs) We have a lot of summers here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. Please stay continued because if you, so speaking of William Faulkner, if you like William Faulkner, we got the sound and the fury coming up soon along with the rest of our August is the next month, right? That's the next month. <laughs> our, our August TBR is coming up. We're going to have a quick break to do the Good Country People coming up. So that'll be kind of like snuck in there before we even do the TBR. But that there's a very specific reason. Stay tuned for that video to check out why we have published that video before the, the TBR. Oh, my gosh. What could the drama be? <laughs> <laughs> is it on the schedule? <laughs> come on dude uh i'm now up to june of 2021 now on our schedule oh lord I just, <laughs> it's so so daunting to me and i'm behind like three books right now <laughs> well and to, and to be fair i have july started too because i learned i had no idea that july was jane austen july like that's just like a oh. thing people read and have you ever read jane austen uh did i have to read that in high school it's it's very common for a lot of people to read it in high school. I never did. Yeah, and I and think I think I did. I think there was a book tag that we did with like, what's the author that's most embarrassing that everyone's read that you ever read? Mine's Jane Austen, and I had no idea Jane Austen July was happening. I, all right, well, we got I don't, a week I don't, left in July, so let's cram how, something in there. I don't know how booktube people know all this stuff. I really don't like. There's all these things happening, and I'm like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> So I made sure for next July, we've got our first Jane Austen planned for this channel. Good job, noob. Yeah, so there's our July 2021 TBR. (laughs) TBR. (laughs) All right, guys, thank you so much for checking out our channel. We hope you appreciate these wrap-ups. 
Are you considering checking out that pick of the month selection? I I'd love to know if you pick it up. If you do, let us know in the comments down below what you thought about it. We'd love to hear from you. So with that said, if you enjoy literature discussions like this, please hit that subscribe button to join us on the journey. Una out. Peace.